What if you could pull the trigger once and land two bullets almost instantaneously, while only feeling recoil for one shot? In the 1980s, the Soviet Union started experimenting on a next generation assault rifle designed to do exactly that. The engineering was so advanced that to this day, the US doesn't have anything that comes close to anywhere as complex as this system. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe your rifle shouldn't have more moving parts than a Rube Goldberg machine. The rifle's development story leads us to answer some of the pros and cons of how the Russian military industrial complex works. Fire off a quick burst at the like and subscribe button and let's get to it. You and I both know the military is constantly modernizing and upgrading their equipment, so why are people still using ancient leather wallet technology. This video's partner, Rage Wallet, uses next-generation wallet manufacturing material made from carbon fiber and burnt titanium in over 30 different colors and styles. The new addition of a Ridge key and coin case will revolutionize how you carry your everyday necessities. It has RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets looking to swipe your credit card information. I love it because it doesn't feel like a giant lump of old receipts and hotel cards in my back pocket when I sit down on it. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. They have 50,000 five-star reviews, which is why Ridge Wallet is so confident that you'll love it that they're going to allow you to test drive it for 99 days. Don't like it? Send it back and get a full refund. Get the best offer by clicking the link in the description below or go to ridge.com slash task and purpose right now and you can save up to 40% through December 22nd. That's ridge.com slash task and purpose for up to 40% off. The story of the AN-94 rifle begins with the famous Russian gun engineer Gennady Nikonov. The fact that he was born in 1950 in the city of Izhnik makes it seem like he was destined to work in the defense industry, because Izhnik is known as a major hub for Russia's defense industry, engineering, and metallurgy. The city has the title of the Armory Capital of Russia. Nikonov's father and mother both worked at the Izhmash Center, which was a massive Soviet arms factory. Talk about being born into something. The city's armory is itself legendary. It was first established on June 10th, 1807 by Emperor of all Russia, Alexander I, in response to Napoleon's invasion of Russia. The factory would go on to supply the Imperial Russian Army with more than 6,000 of the number 15 17.7mm muskets. During World War II, Hizmash Engineering Plant No. 74 served as the main firearms manufacturer for the Soviet Armed Forces, pumping out a total of 11,450,000 rifles and carbines. So this is where Nikonov grew up, surrounded by this history and with his entire family working in the arms industry. In 1975, at 25 years old, he graduated from the Izhvek Mechanical Institute, certified as a gun engineer. He began work at the Izhmash plant in the Department of the Chief Arms Designer as a technician. When the Soviet ministry was looking for engineers for their new weapons program, Project Abakan, they needed someone who had that outside-the-box thinking. They needed a weapons engineer who had it in their blood. Nikonov was perfect. Project Abakan started in 1980 as an initiative to deliver a next-generation weapon for their regular troops that would replace the AK-74. Its program requirements strictly stated that the need for the new rifle had to be 1.5 to 2 times as effective. Remember, at the time, the US had just ended the Vietnam War, and experts on both sides had just gotten a lot of new data about close combat and war. The key data set to look at here was that the average engagement distance ended up typically being between 10 and 30 meters. Most of the time, those situations, whoever shoots first and shoots the most, wins. And that's the problem the Soviet Union was trying to solve. How do you make the average soldier more effective in full auto from the standing position? The Soviet Central Research Institute of Precision Engineering was in control of picking the winner and setting the requirements. It was created in 1944 to oversee small arms production for the Soviet Union. Over a period of three years, Nikonov developed a solution that would meet this strict criteria. What if a rifle could fire two bullets almost on top of each other at the same time? His design was called a blowback shifted pulse. Nikonov and his engineering team used the Russian term Trinani Impulsiv Malfangiro Zatov. Nailed it. To describe the weapon, meaning recoil shifted pulse. Most of the other weapons in the Abakan trial used a very different balanced recoil design. The AN-94 is a select fire rifle in semi, burst, and full send. It has a 16-inch barrel and fires the 545 by 45 millimeter cartridge, which is relatively small and low recoil, similar to the M4, but the Americans use. 
It weighs about 8.5 pounds, making it hefty, 2.5 pounds heavier than the rifle it was meant to replace. It has an overall length of 37 inches. The action is known as being one of the most complicated designs. Compared to other rifles where you have one action with only a few moving parts, the AN-94 is all kinds of busy. This rifle fires so insanely fast that it can sound like one bullet if you're not paying close attention. I think possibly it was meant to defeat ballistic body armor that was in its early stages at the time in the Western armies. The hope could have been that the second bullet would punch through if the first didn't. This is often called a hyperburst feature, especially in the West. Interestingly enough, the rate of fire changes after the initial burst to something more controllable. Hyperburst is estimated to be around 1800 rounds per minute. When you start looking at the internal components of the rifle, you can get a bit overwhelmed. I mean, it looks like there's a freaking bike chain and gear in there. According to the translated article from Kalashnikov Concern about the AN-94, this led to the fact that not only the rank and file, but even the commanders were simply afraid to once again disassemble their new complex rifles for maintenance. So troops were afraid to take it apart because they couldn't get it back together. Overall, eight different systems were submitted to Project Abakan from four different major Russian firearms bureaus. The AN-94 ended up winning and starting production. It's clear from looking at the trial what the oversight committee at the Soviet Central Research Institute and in Precision Engineering got wrong. Their requirements were too strict, crushing innovation and putting engineers into a corner. And they didn't include any regular line unit infantry grunts so they could have some feedback in their trials. So it was an episode of engineers gone wild, just run them up. And the rifle became the official standard Russian regular grunt rifle in 1997. But large scale production doesn't seem to have started until 2002. If we look at Russia's GDP chart for those years, we can get a hint as to why the AN-94 was abandoned. Their economy was struggling after the collapse of the Soviet Union. They lost all of those fat stacks of cash, and their armed forces entirely broke down. Say goodbye to those rubles that pay your soldiers and factory workers, and those defense companies that manufacture the AN-94. Russia's economy is tightly linked to the price of oil, since their main export at the time, oil prices were extremely low, it left less money for them for funding for expensive weapons programs. In 2003, the inventor of the weapon, Gennady Nikonov, passed away at 55 years old, which left less advocates for the platform and possibly no one to spearhead continued improvements to the design that was needed. At least he lived long enough to see his weapon adopted. It is reported that some of the rifles were used in the first Chechen war, which was from 1994 to 1996, but it's unknown how many rifles were built and when production ended. Soviet weapons were historically built around the philosophy of simplicity, reliability, and mass production being the most important factors. The AN-94 was a major departure from this design work, leading us to wonder why it never caught on and why it essentially failed. In 2003, the AN-94 had a price tag of 20,000 rubles, or about 800 USD, while the AK-74 was five times less than that at 4,000 rubles, or $64 USD. And maybe it shouldn't come with a 20-page user manual in order to operate. On top of that, soldiers complained about the weapon's ergonomics, meaning how it handles and feels when you actually operate it, since it couldn't fire with the stock folded because it would block the trigger and the position of the pistol grip was absolutely awful. In 2013, a massive scandal hit the historic Izmash company where the AN-94 was being produced. CEO Vladimir Grudovsky was charged with a 35 million ruble fraud, about 1 million USD, which further hurt any chances of it being produced, since the global firearms market had already been saturated with reliable AK-74s. No country in the world felt that they needed to buy a weapon five times as expensive because the Soviets had already saturated the market by shipping the AK to every communist-friendly nation. The World Bank estimates report that 100 million AK family weapons exist in the world today, out of the total 500 million. Rogue Russian special operators were selling them on the black market. The Sunday Telegraph learned that the British intelligence officials in 2001 found out that the IRA sent agents to Moscow to buy 20 of these AN-94 rifles. This was commonplace at the time, as Russian officers and enlisted soldiers were selling their Soviet weapons to any buyer, so a large amount of the 10 to 20,000 AN-94s that have been estimated to be produced could possibly have been sold off. Today, it's still considered a rare find, popping up in strange places every so often, even in the trunks of Ukrainian cars. I like it. That's casual.
So these things are basically a unicorn of infantry rifles at this point. I think the biggest reason the weapon didn't catch on is because of logistics. Over 5 million AK-74s have been produced, and the Russian military has an estimated 1 million active troops with 2 million reserve troops. The AA-94 shares virtually zero parts in common with the AK-74. Aside from the magazine catch and pistol grip, it has many moving parts. The increased complexity and number of parts means that this thing is a nightmare in the field to strip and clean. Plus, more parts means more potential for broken parts that need to be replaced. Its unique muzzle device that gives it increased back pressure can cause wear and tear on your rifle, making an already complex rifle even more prone to breakages. Gennady Nikonov created within the strict requirements that were set by the Soviet Union, and he made a weapon that did what they asked it to do. Hit target targets two times more effectively from the standing, unsupported position. But it couldn't really do much more than that. If you made it this far in the video, you might be interested in joining the Spare Parts Army YouTube member tier, where you can have access to monthly exclusive content that I'm going to be producing. I just posted an interview I did with a Serbian sniper who's fighting for the Russian army in Ukraine. Sign up now if you're interested in seeing that.